In this lecture, we're going to learn about how monopolies are regulated and when that regulation is imposed, um, how, you know, how it's done and um, what the effect is on the monopoly producer and the market. So this quote, um, will get us thinking about this topic. This is a quote by Henry Clay in 1832, and he said, Of all human powers operating on the affairs of mankind, none is greater than that of competition. When our economy was established by our forefathers, competition was at the cornerstone of its foundation. So competition is good for consumers because it keeps prices low, and it allows for choices for consumers. You know, it's, it's kind of a scary thing when any one company becomes too powerful. Um, there's a whole division of the United States government that's set up to regulate this type of thing, and, and this is antitrust law. Um, antitrust law will make sure that companies can't become too powerful, um, and if it, if, if it seems like they are becoming too powerful, then um, action is taken to break those companies down into smaller companies. And we'll learn more about that when we learn about oligopoly in a, in a few lectures. But a monopoly um, is allowed to function and remain in power in just a few circumstances. And we're going to talk about those circumstances today. Otherwise, you know, when a monopoly is not what's best for consumers, the government does not allow the monopoly to stand. And it will take action to break it down because monopolies have total control over the market and that obviously isn't good for consumers. So we've talked about this situation in the past. This is one of the few types of monopolies that the government does allow to occur and that's known as natural monopoly. A natural monopoly is a monopoly that exists when increasing returns to scale provide a large cost advantage to having all output re produced by a single firm. Um, remember, increasing returns to scale means economies of scale. Okay, same thing, two different terms for the same idea. And that means that when a company increases their inputs by a certain percentage, um, the output will increase by a greater percentage. So when companies, when large companies put a little bit in, they get a lot back in return. Um, this is a unique situation that's a great situation to be in. And monopolies. Um, are able to pr to provide output for the market at lower cost per unit of output when they can um, benefit from this natural monopoly phenomenon. Why this happens is in certain industries um, large fixed costs of production are present and so small companies um, would have to charge incredibly high prices to be able to try to compete in the market. And some examples of natural monopoly, and again, we've talked about these things before, would be things like public utilities, so water, natural gas, um, electricity in your home. Um, and these are industries where there are large fixed costs of production. There's a lot of infrastructure required for these products to be delivered to your home. Um, for example, with water. You need pipes to get that water into your house. And so if we had several competing water companies, um, they would each have to have their own set of pipes coming into your home, and that would be unsafe and very expensive because, you know, that's a lot of extra material, whereas just one set of pipes is cheaper. Um, same concept with energy, you know, multiple sets of power lines, etc., power grids, um, and natural gas, same pipes, pipes in your home example and concept. Um, Comcast is on here because they have the wires running under your under your lawn in your backyard. Um, so if we allowed several competing cable companies to exist, there'd be a lot of wires running um, in in everyone's property, and that wouldn't be very safe and it wouldn't be very cost efficient. So Comcast is kind of a tricky example though because. I think that there are similar products available to consumers, and that's um, satellite TV. So I don't, I don't know if Comcast is the best example of a monopoly, but, but as far as um, natural monopolies go, cable TV, um, you know, is allowed to, to the, the government does allow one company to kind of be in control there for obvious reasons. It kind of it makes sense. 
So here's what a monopoly, a natural monopoly graph looks like, and you'll see that they're operating in the downward sloping portion. Let me highlight that there. The downward sloping portion of their long run average total cost curve. Um, and so that means that they're able to produce this um, output at a cheaper price than if we had several small competing companies in the relevant output range there. Okay, so when companies have um, a natural monopoly advantage or when companies are being allowed to operate as a monopoly to recoup some cost of research and development so they have a patent on the product or a copyright um, there are certain ways that the government regulates their activity to make sure that they don't take advantage of consumers and take advantage of their power too much. Um, the first type of regulation that can exist is called marginal cost pricing and this is where the socially optimal price um, is where price equals marginal cost. So this is where the government treats this monopoly as though it were a perfectly competitive firm finding its profit maximizing quantity of output. Now we know that profit maximizing level of output is where MR equals MC, but if you think back to perfect competition, marginal revenue was equal to price. Okay, because of Mr. Darp and perfectly elastic demand since the, the firms are all price takers. So we could say if we're finding the profit maximizing level of output like a perfect competitor would, we could say that when price equals marginal cost, that is the perfect profit maximizing level of output, um, just like, like marginal revenue equals marginal cost, but we're just restating it, price equals marginal cost since MR and price are the same thing. So here's what it would look like on the graph. When marginal cost equals price, or demand, because remember DARP is still intact here, then the price that the regulated firm could charge would be consistent with the demand curve here. But you'll notice a problem. If, if they were forced to follow this type of regulation, marginal cost pricing, uh, the problem is that they can't cover their cost of output. So, the pros of this type of regulation are the firm is operating at their most allocatively efficient level of output, so the government is forcing this firm to produce the socially optimal quantity, the market equilibrium quantity, and deadweight loss is eliminated because we're producing at that socially optimal quantity of output. But again, here's the problem. At this socially optimal quantity of output, because of the large fixed costs of production in these types of industries, the firm is not able to even cover their cost of output. So they'd be selling the product for less than it costs them to make the product. And if the government's going to force this monopoly firm to produce at this level and do this, they're going to have to subsidize the firm in order to allow that to happen. So they're going to have to offer a subsidy to the producer in the amount of average total cost minus price in this example. And who really pays for the subsidy is taxpayers. So we have to decide how important it is to, to force um, greater output because that's the price we're going to pay. So there's pros and cons. Okay, the other type of regulation is called fair return or average cost pricing. Um, cost of service regulation is imposed where price equals average total cost. So this is a little bit more of a moderate approach of regulation. Um, and this is where we treat the firm as a perfect competitor at long run equilibrium. So we're allowing this firm to break even. Okay? Not to operate at the profit maximizing quantity, but to break even. And the point of that is to force a little bit more output but but not have to subsidize. So let's look at this on the graph. When price or demand equals average total cost, here's the output. Um, and you'll see that average revenue or price is equal to average total cost at it's approximately 2,500 units of output in this example. So the pro here is that the firm is operating at a lower average total cost than if they were at their profit maximizing level of output, which would be here where MR equals MC. They'd be charging this price way up here and operating um, at this average total cost here. So we're forcing them to produce more, so output is higher, and price will be lower for consumers instead of charging a price way up here above four dollars, now consumers are only going to have to pay about two fifty, and there's no subsidy required, um, so that's a good thing. 
And the big con about this type of regulation is that we're not operating at the most efficient level of output either in terms of allocative efficiency or productive efficiency because we're not forcing this firm to produce the market equilibrium quantity where supply equals demand and we're also not forcing this firm to produce at their lowest average total cost which is way over here and would probably be in the inelastic portion of this firm's demand curve so the, the firm really wouldn't want to produce there um, so this is kind of like I said a, a more moderate approach where we're allowing the firm to break even so we don't have to subsidize but we're going to sacrifice a little bit of output into the market um, in, in exchange for, for not having to subsidize so what you should know at the end of this lecture here is why the government allows some monopolies to function um, and what the two types of basic regulation are and what they look like and what the pros and cons of each are and we just um, reviewed those and showed those on the, the two previous graphs so I'd encourage you to go back and look at those again if you're confused um, and make sure you write down questions that you have so we can discuss them in class alright that's it